today would be a good day to be cuddled up under a blanket maybe sitting by an open fire in a fireplace or go back to my real old days and be sitting in front of a wood stove that brings back some memories there's a when I was a child we, the house we lived in was we cooked on a wood stove heated on a wood stove had to go out and cut our own firewood there was always a the odor of a little bit of smoky odor in the house from when the fires were going. But a lot of memories come to mind thinking about those old wood stove. I remember in the summertime in the kitchen it would get so hot I don't know. They couldn't figure out how my my mother stayed in there to do that cooking. Because it got downright hot. But in the wintertime that old house would freeze you to death. That's when you loved to be in the kitchen. Out in the living room, we had a wood stove set right in the middle of the floor. I spent many an hour waiting for a baked potato out of that burger bear. We'd go get a potato, throw it up in the hot coals, leave it in there for 30, 40 minutes, pull it out, it'd be all black and burn on the outside. She never tasted nothing finer than what was on the inside of that tater. Makes a good baked potato. The baker potato is extreme I eat. But one disadvantage to living in a house that burned wood, you had a job to do. You had to cut wood. And me and my brother, since my parents were divorced, it fell on us to do the wood chopping. My grandfather lived at a local sawmill and he would sometimes bring home slabs from where they cut off the side of logs or pieces of it. Bring a truckload of that and throw out there for us. But a lot of times we had to cut wood. It was too big to be in there. Uh, it sure burned a good fire though. But it was a lot of work. Uh, in Aiken, South Carolina, we actually used a cross-cut saw. hickory nut tree that was probably a foot and a half across. It was a huge soft tree that I, that I remember. I'm sure there was more than one. But we got quite a rhythm going on that crosscut saw and it didn't take long to cut them logs up with a good sharp crosscut saw. If anything, it made us more tougher. But I still appreciate this smell of smoke around the fire. It kind of gets in your blood. I remember one time I was out in the backyard chopping wood. But I was chopping under the clothesline. And I'd come down with that axe and the axe caught on the clothesline over my head because I wasn't looking back. Sprung back and dang near brained myself. Whopped myself with my own axe. Nowadays, you wouldn't think of giving your kid a sharp object like an axe and send him out. Not no 10-year-old boy like I would send him out to chop wood. But we did. We did. We were expected to do that back then. And I came out of it with all my own fingers and toes, even when we were using the axe to split, to make splinters. That's a chore in itself to take a piece of fat, lighter wood and chop it up into splinters to start the fire. And then nothing better than a piece of fat lighter, which is a pine rosin tar type wood that comes from the center of a pine tree stump. I built my house when I, when I got old enough. I built my own house. I messed up. I should have installed a fireplace. I didn't do it. Once the house was built, it was too late to think about installing a fireplace, but I should have took the time to do it. My granddaddy, thinking about him, I don't know why, my granddaddy worked at Shepherd Lumber Company, which was across the street from where we lived in a, a long 
stretch of row houses. Wasn't much to them, just little shotgun houses. But um, I remember he had a black pickup truck. He drove the, their pickup truck from the lumber company. He'd drive it home and park it out there in front of his house. He lived down the street from us. One day it was, I got in his truck, sitting up behind the steering wheel, couldn't hardly see over the steering wheel. Them old trucks back then had a starter button on the floor, and when you push that starter button, it starts the car. Truck, I should say. Kind of similar to a dimmer switch was on the floorboard. You didn't use the key to start it. So I'm sitting in that old truck and I reach my foot down as far as I can and push that starter button. Well, the truck is parked in gear. I guess he had it in first gear or whatever. Stick shit, you know. But I pushed that button because I'd seen him do it so many times when he started the truck. Well, with the truck in gear and me pushing the starter button, I wasn't just turning over the starter. I was moving the truck, pushing down on that starter button and the truck started moving and it was a little bit downhill anyway so by the time I got my foot off the gas pedal I done run into the house. Fortunately it wasn't going fast enough to do much damage. I got my hind end warmed up that day. Tell me don't never mess with this truck. The old man had a sadistic streak in him, though. I remember one time he was out there working on the motor, doing something on the engine, and I walked up to him. What you doing, granddaddy? And he grabbed me by the arm and then reached in that motor somewhere and grabbed the spark plug wire. Now, he couldn't feel the shock. But it sure was making me dance around out there at the end of his hand. He just laughed like crazy. He done shocked the tar out of me. But he was a good old man. His name was Walter Spires and he lived in Mac Cree, Georgia. That's of all I got on my vlog today. It's P. Walpar getting on down the road. Thanks for checking in, my friends.